It's Friday the 9th of November 2018, and there are clearly three holes in the ground. Just as Uranus slipped back into Aries on the 6th for some bullshit clearing, Jupiter emptied Sagittarius on the 8th, so seek excellence and set wildfires with wisdom's flame until December 2019. We have a year to arrange the landscape of the future. The space weather has been choppy of late, but it's important to remember that the future never looks like what we've just left behind. And this is episode 1829 of 301 Permanently Moved, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded and edited in one hour by me at The JMO. I didn't know what to talk about this week, but time is getting on in the day and as this whole thing is meant to be written and recorded and edited in an hour, I've decided to just hit record and let words spill out of me. Where the next few minutes goes, it's going to be as much of a mystery to me as it is to you. Here's the thing. I've already done an episode on remembrance. Back in June, I travelled with my family to the Popperinger Military Cemetery in Belgium to commemorate the 100th anniversary death of my great-grandfather, Henry John Springett. It's episode 1809 if you want to go back and listen to it. We could take a left turn here into ancestral practices and how the commandment to honour thy father and mother so that you may live long in the land is reflexive and that to live for any amount of time on any land results or even requires you the opportunity to honour any and all of the ancestors. But I won't. Instead, I will assure you that actually remembrance is so much more than pinning a poppy to your coat and throthing loudly online about our boys or sacrifice. It is a dangerous discourse that just gets more and more ridiculous and hysterical with every year. So many burly, tough and patriotic boomers stuck in a cultural, temporal no-man's land, confusing Kronos and Kairos with the wars of their fathers and the wars of today. The meaning of that term, gammon, said Mr. Gregsbury, is unknown to me. If it means that I grew a little too fervid, or perhaps even hyperbolical, in extolling my native land, I admit the full justice of the remark. I am proud of this free and happy country. My form dilates, my eye glistens, and my breast heaves. My heart swells, my bosom burns, and then I call to mind her greatness and her glory. Charles Dickens, Nicholas Nicholsby. Too many are sat behind keyboards, curing slowly with age, getting saltier and saltier, wishing they could wash themselves through with that magic ingredient that prevents their heart from rotting, saltpetre or potassium nitrate, a highly toxic substance that can be dangerous if it is not mixed in the right proportions. It is no longer sold freely as it can be used for bomb making. Regardless of the state of their souls, it is fortunate for us that the key to roasting a gammon is to soak it in water for 24 hours to remove the excess salt. When exactly the gammons of this world get placed into a bucket labelled reality to desalinate, I don't know. Perhaps the Brexit bucket soon will relieve them of their hubris. I've spoken before on how the media perpetuates and boosts certain narratives. Look around and I am aghast at the people, friends even, that have taken up bats and gone out to the fight. I personally question the utility of even engaging in a fight that takes place on a stage, in a ring, or perhaps a pit of power's construction. It is convenient that this discourse is yet again played out online, in papers, and on television. It's not news, it's opinion. Whether one should drown any energy in engaging in this kind of combat these days is an open question. There is, at the end of the day, just too many fronts. Focus instead on clandestine raids and other approaches that can make space for voices that operate outside of the consensus. I have a book of sermons by Leslie Dixon Weatherhead, born 1893 to 1976, a Methodist priest and minister of the city temple, known both for its nonconformism and spiritualism. The book is called That Immortal Sea and was first published in 1956. In it, there is a Remembrance Day sermon called This Haunted World, delivered just five years after the end of the Second World War. Nowhere in it does he mention the troops, or the army, the military, or the state. Instead, he rails against materialism and speaks of the reality of the spiritual. He says we shouldn't believe that God has stopped talking to us through our dreams. He talks of how spirits haunt this world, and that the truth is that everyone has had some mystic moments on a mountain, or heard the birds calling on a moor, or slept by the sea with the windows open at night and heard the beauty of the world's oldest music, and that within these moments we find the rest of humanity. It's affecting and timely. You can find it online as a PDF probably, although I haven't looked. Anyway, 
It took me 50 minutes to record all that, so now I've got to edit it in less than 10 minutes. Um, I think it was a pretty hypocritical episode, and I'm thinking maybe I should just have less opinions about things in general.